Yes, there we go. Saying. Good afternoon. Well, I guess good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome uh, to the new pair of Google Hangout for our Riverside Military Academy families. Uh, what we're doing this for is for our most recent inquiries that are starting the application process, those that are in the middle of the application process, most importantly, those of our families that are accepted applicants as we get ready for what's going to happen here in early January, this life change that is coming. Um, we're going to talk about two major things uh, tonight, uh, primarily. We're going to talk about what you can expect on registration day uh, on January 13th. And um, and then what to expect as your son negotiates the rock cycle and that change for both you as a family and him. Uh, so we'll hit those things. Uh, joining me tonight, I've got a good panel here that's going to be able to answer questions uh, from your perspective, uh, from their perspective, excuse me. Uh, starting up front, and of course, myself, I'm Major Corbin. I'm the Dean of Enrollment Management here. Uh, I oversee admissions, uh, work with marketing, public relations, and financial aid. So. Uh, many of you have had some contact with me already. Uh, we have the mother of current cadet, Andrew Connell, and Alice Hendrickson, who has graciously joined us from South Florida. Hey, Alice. Hi. Hi. We've got Alina Renis, who is uh, representing the business office here. Uh, hello, Aline. Hello. <laughs> We've got our Dean of Academic Affairs, uh, Jamie Green, who's, who's coming to us live from his home where he was bouncing his newborn baby not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good evening. Yeah. We've got Lieutenant Colonel Adam Carter, who's the Deputy Commandant of Cadets here at Riverside. They're in uniform. Hello, everyone. And then Mrs. Rhonda Hansard, who is our Director of Health Services at Riverside. Hello. Uh, we're going to go through registration first. If you have questions while we're doing this event, um, you can put it in the Q&A section. I'll be able to see those questions as they come, and we'll try to get to them particularly those that relate to everybody. If they're individual questions specific to your unique situation, we will address those on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about what you can expect at registration. Now, here's the thing. Once your son is accepted, you'll be receiving some information from us about how to, um, how to, to complete your enrollment forms, your contacts, sign-outs, those kind of things. And you'll also receive information relative to registration day. Um, and so each, during the registration, you will go through a series of stations uh, manned by some of the people that you see here. And they're going to talk about what, uh, what sort of the, the secrets of success for each of those stations, what you can expect to see. Uh, I'm going to start up front with some information, uh, frequently asked questions that we get in the admissions uh, part of it and talk to you about my piece before we transition to the rock side. Here's some helpful things to know prior to registration. Once your son is accepted, you're going to be receiving instructions on how to complete your enrollment documents and forms. It's really important that you get those done prior to coming to registration. Uh, you can do them at registration, but it's only going to add some complexity and time to an already emotional event. So it's best that you do them prior to, uh, prior to arriving. What will happen is you'll receive instructions with uh, screenshots and a step-by-step -step on how to fill out your forms online. Uh, and you'll receive your login information so that you can do that. Um, those contracts are very simple. Um, one link will get you to pick the tuition payment plan that you're choosing uh, and to set your limits on his cadet accounts like the Goomba Grill or the, the uh, cadet store. You'll put the amount that you, uh, that you authorize him to spend in there. Uh, and then you'll also fill out a form that would say who can visit your son who can sign him out, who can view his academic records, those kind of things, and of course uh, everything from sports uh, participation and others. Most of that information will be auto-populated, so what you're doing is just putting in some of those specific things, you will verify it, and then you will submit those forms and we will have them here. So I recommend you do that prior to coming so it will ease, uh, ease that day for you. Another important thing, probably more important than ever at this point in, in the school's career, is to go ahead and submit your $2,500 tuition deposit. Uh, we will be full. We're already handling more accepted applicants than we have space at this point. Uh, the only way I can manage that, I'm sorry, more applicants than we have space at this moment. The only way that I'm able to guarantee a space for your son is 
basically the first 50 accepted applicants who've submitted their tuition deposits. So I know it's perfect timing with Christmas and everything, but you, you need to get that in there, okay, uh, so that we can ensure he has a seat. If you will not be traveling with your son and he will be coming um, by himself, if he's coming from you know out, out of state or out of country, uh, it's really, really important that you've submitted all your contracts. Uh, we have all his medical information and that we have uh, your first payment so that we can enroll your son. Uh, we'll talk through some things that are specific relative to uh, flight itineraries and pick up at the airport, all that later on in, in the uh, in the hangout. But it's important that we have all those documents uh, before he arrives on campus uh, for, for our sake and yours. If you have questions at any point about where you are in the process, you can feel free to call my team at one eight seven seven my cadet and we will check the status of your forms and where you are in the process. Okay, so all that is prior to registration. Once you arrive at registration, as I told you, you'll receive detailed instructions on the time to report. Uh, we base it on alphabetical order, so the, re the registration is from 9 till 12. Um, uh, letters A through J will come 9 to 10, K through R 10 to 11, and S through Z 11 to 12. Now there are going to be people who can't arrive exactly during that time. That's okay. Just communicate it to us. But the point of it is, is so we don't have log jams and we can sort of um, take all those families through and provide the kind of time necessary for them. You will see signs that point you towards registration and where to park. You'll, there'll be a lot of support that's out there that will direct you to the Sandy Beaver Center, which is where we do these registrations. Um, and you will, you will see where to enter and to get your name tag. Once you arrive, um, once you arrive onto to the registration site, my team will check the status of your forms and we'll let you know if, if you're good to go, if there's anything additional you need to do and tell you the stations that you need to hit. And then you're going to go basically from table to table to academics, infirmary, advancement, uh, athletics as you go through so that you can meet the people who are going to be working with your son uh, every day. And so, as a segue, that's that's why we're going to have each of these individuals to talk about what to expect when you get to their table. And we're going to start up first with our Dean of Academic Affairs, Dean Green, who's going to talk about what to expect as you do that. Jamie? Well, hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, once again, Jamie Green, Dean of Academic Affairs. Uh, Ours is going to be the first table that you get to on registration day. Uh, and our primary objective is to introduce you to your son's counselors and to facilitate you in understanding what his schedule will look like. Um, importantly, the documentation we need for that to be, to be effective in our mission is we're going to need a transcript plus uh, a, a, a a, a document or a transcript showing the completed first semester grades. Uh, many of you may not have completed first semester already, uh, and so that might not have been reflected in the original transcripts that you sent to us. Uh, so when you come on enrollment day, if you can bring those transcripts with you, you're going to be able to create a much more accurate uh, schedule for your son uh, and make any adjustments if needed to graduation plans. Um, other than that, uh, I say bring. You know, ours is uh, a fairly easy table. Um, we're, we're, we're first. We're, we're first in line, and, and we, we're, we're well staffed. We have all the counselors there. So bring bring the documentation you have from your previous school, completed transcripts, uh, and we'll make sure that you you leave us with a schedule. Thank you, Jamie. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. All right, so next we're going to transition to Mrs. Ryan Mahans here because there's really nothing more important than the safety and health of your, your children, and it's a big deal, obviously, to us because we, we take responsibility for them and their medical care on top of a million other things. Okay, so uh, we're going to we're gonna transition now to Ryan and he'll talk to you some of the helpful hints, things that you need to know, things that will help you help us and vice versa. Rhonda? Rhonda. So the, the biggest thing to make sure that you have completed the history and all of the bio health documentation to the Magnus, all of this located uh, from the parent screen whenever you log in to your Riverside um, parent portal. Um, whenever you arrive at our table, we will discuss any health concerns and histories that you have about your son. 
if you have a current physical, typically we, the physical needs to be within the past six months. Um, that will last them for the second year uh, to participate in community activity um, and the sports that we offer here at Riverside. Um, in addition to that, if your cadet takes medication, we'll discuss all of those medications. We'll discuss uh, the times that we offer dispensing. Um, we'll discuss uh, refills, how those take place, and we'll come up with a good general plan uh, to make sure that everything uh, is carried out accordingly. Um, then after that, if they receive a illness or injury, we will always keep in contact with you all and let you know what's going on. Okay, thank you, Rhonda. Next, we're going to transition to the uh, business office. Who's going to talk through what you can expect in terms of uh, that process there. Eileen? Thanks, James. Okay, first thing that we're going to look for is that you have filled out an enrollment contract and that you've selected the payment type. We have three payment types. You can either pay tuition in full, a two-payment plan, or monthly plan. So it's important that you do that online enrollment, select the payment plan. Um, also on that online enrollment, there is a link to FACT, F-A-C-T-S. And this is a third-party biller who handles the, the billing for us. You're going, you're going to need to set up a FACT account and choose the payment type. Um, you can choose uh, either savings account or checking account to have it drafted from. You can, we also have, uh, you can select any type of credit card. We really prefer that you use a, a bank account um, just to keep our costs down. Um, so once you select that, the type of payment that you want, the payment type, and then your payment plan, what that does is sends a message to Laura Stennett, who's our student billing coordinator, and she will go in and finalize everything. So if you have any goal scholarships or if you have um, if you have financial aid, she'll go in and put all that information in correctly. And then once she's finalized, it'll send you a an email saying that everything is set. So you can go in and look to see if your tuition is set up as you had expected. And if you have any questions, just please feel free to call uh, Laura Stennett in the business office. She'll be happy to walk you through that. If you have any questions in the fax management um, website, in, in um, navigating that, you need to um, call fax management. They have a, an 800 number um, in their w website that you can call them for help. There are um, several accounts that have to be set up. James had, had mentioned that earlier. We have a cadet store account, and that's where your cadet's going to get uniform and any replacement items there, um, school supplies, toiletries, and things of that nature. Uh, we recommend approximately $100 limit is what what's typical. Um, you can always change that limit if you feel that your uh, cadet is spending too much, um, you can always lower that and just again call Laura Stennett and she can certainly help you um, change that. And then there's also an, another account which is a Goomba Grill account and you set a limit and this is a monthly limit so they can spend up to what, if you say $50, they hit that limit in the Goomba Grill, they can't, um, they cannot charge any, any longer. Um, you can change those limits at any time if you want to. If you want to adjust them, that's you certainly um, have that option. And finally, I would like you to know that we are a cashless campus, so please do not let your cadets bring cash. Um, we ask that you set them up with a debit card or um, or a credit card. Um, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Most most parents will set them a debit card excuse me, a debit card uh, connected to their to their bank account. You can control the amount that they spend, you can control, you know, a daily amount, um, and you can also see where they're spending money. That Those cards are used if they take an off-campus trip. 
and that's their spending money. Um, and that that is all I have. Well, I mean, just a follow-up question. Where would they find the instructions on how to set up a fax account? Is that the kind of thing that needs to be done prior to coming in? Well, the fax, is, it's on that link to your enrol in your enrollment contract. There is a link. You just click on that link. That will put you into fax. You, you um, set up a login and a password. Um, and make sure you save that because that's the, what you're going to use every month to log in. Um, Facts will send you an email to say your statement is ready, and you can review it. Um, you set up, you can set up your uh, if you want payment to come out the tenth of the month or the twentieth, twentieth of the month. But Alice, there is do you have anything to main. add to that, just uh, from from your perspective on setting that up and how it works for you. Um, it was really easy. Um, all the links, um, I, I didn't have any trouble with any online registration or, or just registration at school and I would reiterate as a parent that um, you should absolutely do everything ahead of time um, and, and then it's absolutely stress free the day and you can just concentrate on being with your son. Great, thank you. Alright, next we're going to transition You'll see this on the 13th when you arrive. The last station that you go to is often the hardest, and it's, uh, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off in some cases. And that's when you get to see the, this beautiful face here, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Carter, as he says, all right, hug your mama, let's, let's get to work. Yeah. And, uh, and so he's the last station that you will go through is the, is the Commandant Station. Adam, won't you describe sort of what happens when we get to your station? Sure. Um, when you get to our station, uh, Mr. Corbin said it's the last station. So Speak up, please, Adam. You're, you're a little quiet from where you are. When you get to our station, as Major Corbin said, it's the last station. So uh, you'll see two to three representatives from the Commandant's office uh, there at that table. They'll have a check-in sheet, which we'll look at to make sure you've been through all the appropriate stations. And then once we're sure that you've completed that, uh, we'll assign your son a grade relative to the company relative to his grade. So uh, you'll know what company is assigned to. And then just prior to our table, uh, you'll receive uh, from a, a group of parents uh, that uh, holding the table just prior to our station. They'll give you this parent handbook. Back page of the parent handbook has all the contact information that you'll need to uh, access various departments around campus. And then uh, also we'll identify the contact information for the back officer. And, um, after that, we'll uh, ask your son if he's got any electronic devices, we'll take those, bag them, we'll tag them. Uh, he'll get those later, 30 days, uh, once he's completed his rock cycle. Uh, and as Mr. Corbin said, this is the tough part. We ask you to say goodbye to your son there. Uh, it's a good opportunity for photos uh, if you'd like to take them. And then we uh, disengage uh, your son from you, move him over to a set of chairs that we've got, and uh, we begin the end processing shortly thereafter. Okay, thanks, Colonel Carter. I appreciate that. Alice, I know I jumped in with you pretty quickly. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we transition to some of the, the questions that were asked by the group? Um, no, no. I, I would just say that it is incredibly organized, and um, I wasn't expecting the Band-Aid, but I'm glad it happened just like that because I think it made it a lot easier, um, you know, rather than prolonging the agony. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to transition to some of the questions that the uh, that you, the audience, sent to us um, earlier over the last couple weeks, and I'll take them to the people who uh, should answer the questions. Uh, the first question that was asked was relative to when is the actual start date, because the academic calendar says uh, cadets return on January 4th, and we've been telling you it's January 13th. Uh, the new parent registration, I'm sorry, new cadet registration is on January 13th. What happens for our current boys that are here right now is they go on Christmas furlough starting on Friday afternoon, basically, and they return on the 4th uh, for exams. So they're, they're in exams um, prior to the new boys arriving on January 13th. So the report day for your sons will be on January 13th, Wednesday. What will happen is they do five days of orientation where they're not in class yet. They're just focusing in on how to march, 
how to make their beds, you know, what a diamond on somebody's chest means, what's that black dot on Colonel Carter's chest mean, uh, just some of the basics of where my classrooms are, uh, who's my roommate, those kind of things. And then they start school, uh, what is that, Monday the 18th or 19th, I don't have the calendar right here in front of me, but they'll start class uh, during that period of time. So uh, the day the boys need to arrive is January 13th. I also know there's going to be some of you who need to fly them in early or later in the afternoon or some that even come in on January 14th. Those issues are best dealt with your admissions counselor and we will work with your family to, to, do, uh, to help you, whatever's convenient. Uh, the next question that was asked sort of rel related to what I just said is, when is the best time for my son to fly in if he's coming alone? Um, the Commandant of Cadet's office handles transportation, security, uh, health services, just about everything outside of the classroom and academics. So I'm going to hand that question over to uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Carter. Adam? Yeah, so I uh, thinking uh arrive anywhere between 9 in the morning and 7 at night, uh, we should be able to facilitate for transportation back to the academy uh, and have them back on campus no later than 2100. Uh, of course, earlier is better, so uh, if you get them on campus, the type of administration, that's not the fault. Uh, but if we have to operate outside of those times, we can do that as well. Uh, if you're going to, if you do have transportation uh, information, it would be helpful if you would forward that to the academy. Uh, and that goes to uh, Kevin Geyer. I think uh, uh, Mr. Corbin will give you access to his email address. Uh, but we can coordinate the pickups a little more specifically if we've got that information. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restate that because I think it came in a little garbled. I just want to make sure everyone heard that, okay? Um, we prefer that you ri arrive to Atlanta Hartsfield Airport between 9 a.m. It's 7 p.m., okay? They've got a lot of stuff to do, so the earlier the better. Uh, we've got to get them in uniforms and haircuts and all those kind of things. Uh, when you finalize an itinerary, you need to email that transportation at riversidemilitary.com. Uh, Major Geyer and his team will get that uh, itinerary, we'll put it into a schedule, and we will be there for pickup, and we'll send you instructions on what your son needs to be looking for when he arrives, all those kind of things. Uh, it's something that we do all the time. If you have questions relative to transportation, flying in, etc., uh, feel free to forward those to admissions at riversidemilitary.com or transportation at riversidemilitary.com. Uh, the next question was how long is registration going to take? Um, we've talked a couple times about uh, getting your documents in. Uh, to speed that process up for yourself that will allow you the time that you want to take. So it can take as long as you want it to or as short as you want it to. Generally speaking, it's going to take about an hour to do what you need to do. Uh, if you have a lot of questions for Rhonda or for academics, uh, that's usually where things get, get sort of uh, backed up. Uh, so as much as you can do prior to registration day, whether that is emailing the infirmary at Riverside Military or to your admissions counselor uh, to, to, to make that process go because it's not just about you, it's about the other families that are there too and so uh, let's try to get as much of that up front as we can. You can always contact us and we'll get you in contact with the people that you need to. Uh, but generally speaking, registration takes about an hour uh, if you're sort of moving through. Some people do it quickly, some people do it longer, it usually takes about an hour. Um, Next question that we've gotten is what should we pack for our son? Is the list in the parent handbook of items to bring all inclusive? Uh, you've probably gotten some guidance from your admissions counselor, but I'm going to hand this off to uh, Colonel Carter again. Adam? Yeah, we prefer actually that uh, they arrive with as little as possible. We provide everything they need from toothbrush to blankets to pillowcase sheets. Everything that they need, they're going to be given as they go through the uh, process. Uh, if they are playing a sport, they have to have something specific to that sport, whether it be cleats, wrestling shoes, golf clubs, baseball bats, uh, they do need to bring that stuff so they don't have to purchase that on the market. So, uh, less is more, uh, but uh, let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> All right, good. 
Uh, next question is related to mobile technology, e-readers, iPads, cell phones, etc. Are those allowed, Adam? No. Uh, we prefer that, you know, almost every kid's got a, a cell phone at this point in time. E-readers, iPads, those kind of things we do not allow. Uh, 11th and 12th graders are allowed to bring laptops, uh, but if they do not have laptops, we do provide a uh, computer in the room. In the first 30 days, which we'll get into in a second, they're not even going to have access to their cell phones, but uh, keep those things at home. Uh, do we get to watch him get a haircut or get him uh, see him in uniform, Adam? It is very unlikely. Uh, my preference is that we do the separation as quickly as possible. It's an emotional time for everybody, the parent, the cadet, and uh, I can't tell you exactly when he's going to be in uniform. And when he's going to get his hair cut, it's kind of a first come, first serve situation. Uh, where we have a certain sign is where we place them. Uh, the longer the parents hang around, the more difficult separation. Okay. Will I be able to meet his tack officer? It is possible. I'm working on that. Uh, the majority of our bed space right now is in the main cabin, so it's likely that uh, most of the cadets coming in, with the exception of the Seventh and eighth graders will be assigned uh, the subunit of the band company. So, that being said, my intention is to have one more of the banks at registration and the other banks at the Okay, Rhonda, this one's for you. When and how will my son get his daily medications? Well, that typically is pretty easy, except the task gets pretty daunting at times. So what happens is we go up to the dining hall at mess one, mess two, and mess three. Um, that will be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, those are our three major dispensing times. The cadets line up at the med cart. We're always in a stationary uh, position over, um, always, always in the same spot so the cadets know where to go to. Um, they will typically get several reminders. Their uh, cadet leaders will remind them. We have med helpers that are cadets. Uh, they will go out and remind the cadets to come get their meds. Um, we also offer another dispensing time, and that's at 4 o'clock, which is typically right after school. Um, and those are our four dispensing times. Okay, thanks, Rhonda. Appreciate that. Okay, at this time we're going to transition over to the rock cycle. This is a critical time for your, your son and really for you. Um, the world is soft and easy and planet female is very enticing and all of a sudden now we're putting them into this world where there's a bunch of bunch of men in uniforms and they're marching and having to make their beds and, uh, and it's a big change for them and many of them it's their first time away from home. Some are as young as 12 years old, some are as old as 18. So uh, the ROCK cycle stands for Recruit on Campus. We're going to get into some of the specifics of this but it's a, it's a significant emotional event for you and for your sons. Um, so we're going to talk through what the purpose of it is, what do they actually do during the rock cycle, and some of the benefits of it. I'm going to hand that off first to Lieutenant Colonel Carter. Speak slowly, it's getting a little garbled on your end, okay? I will. Uh, there's many purposes to the rock cycle. Um, through years and years of experience, we've certainly come to know that it takes at least 30 days for most students to overcome uh, associated with homesickness. Uh, at the same time, there's so much to learn about being a cadet to draw that out over an extended period of time. So, kind of a crash course on learning how to become a cadet. Uh, you know, young boys, no one likes being told what to do, especially young boys. Uh, and we get them uh, systematically used to uh, following directions and orders, not only from adults, but from cadet leadership as well. So, uh, it's a uh, there's a lot going on in a very small period of time, but by the end of that process, we expect them to know everything that there is about being a cadet and then to be formed as a cadet. Okay, thank you. Can you discuss um, sort of how the rock cycle is going to be different for day students versus boarding students? Yes, uh, it's for the uh, first three days we'll try and have them board on campus, that would be our preference. And then after that, um, they will go through everything that the other walks go through up until 
at the end of the school day, which at that time we were at home. Uh, same 30 day period, uh, same expectations on campus. Uh, the only difference is that uh, they'll spend the afternoons uh, at home. Okay. Uh, here are some of the questions that were sent in from parents uh, that are participating in this that hangout today. Um, and this is probably for both uh, Adam, Lieutenant Colonel Carter, and Alice. How do I communicate with my son during the rock cycle? Uh, Adam, why don't you take that one first, then I'll hand it over to you, Ms. Hendrickson. I will. Uh, within the first three days, every uh, cadet or every rock should have their email account set up. Uh, and us have done it. So I know cadets are, or young men these days are not used to email. Uh, everybody's texting, Snapchatting, and uh, every other social app out there. But uh, we're going to go old school on them, and we're going to put them in front of the computer. They will be emailing uh, you guys uh, as frequently as every day, hopefully. Uh, the news up front will probably be a little bit exaggerated and alarming, uh, but I think we'll find that that's tempered with time. Alice, you probably want to add something to that. <laughs> yeah, I was I was laughing. Um, so you're not completely out of touch with your son. You know, email at least you know you know how they're doing. And uh, Colonel Carter hit it on the nail. The stories are going to be so exaggerated, and you just have to calm down and trust Riverside um, because it's going to be okay. But um, it, you just have to brace yourself. And every parent I talked to told me the same thing, and I really didn't believe it, but, but I experienced the same. So there's going to be a lot of drama. Um, unfortunately, an Oscar doesn't come with it right now, but um, just trust the system and trust those that are taking care of, of your son. Thanks. Yeah, the other thing I think that's important to highlight is, uh, you know, the TAC officer is, the, is the, generally their retired Army, Marine, Navy, uh, Air Force, they're there all the time with the boys. And they'll tell you straight. They'll tell you if he's struggling uh, or if he's homesick or if he's doing well. Uh, we also have some resources, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, um, that will help you during that first little bit of time. Uh, and if you ever get stuck and people, you know, you're not getting the response that you want, you get nervous, you can always call it missions. We'll help solve that problem for you. Um, the next question I had is, can I send him things? Is he allowed to have food in his room? Colonel uh, Carter? The answer is yes. Uh, we have a, they can give one box, Tupperware box they put in the bottom of their closet. There is a contraband list out there. Obviously we don't want glass items in the barracks. We've got terrazzo floors. Uh, so it, you know, glass shatters pretty quickly on those floors. Um, they can't have gum. Any package that they do get Tech is going to go through it. Um, we have a relationship with Publix here, uh, a local food store, which they deliver. You can actually order online. They know what our contraband list is. They know what we allow. They know what we don't allow. And we get those uh, pretty regularly. Uh, you can also order stuff through the cadet store to be delivered to their room. Uh, but obviously, uh, there's no cooking uh, in the barracks, uh, nothing that requires heat, uh, and like I said, plastic containers. Great. Anybody got anything to add to that piece? Because the boys are hungry all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to say that I think one of the things that helped my son adjust is, is the care packages. So I think that that's a way, you know, um, kind of feed them, feed them, you know, feed them to show them that you love them. So I do think that was an incredible help. And I also wanted to add just in the former question that um, the entire Riverside staff is incredibly unbelievably responsive so you know I, I rarely think that you're gonna get that that feeling that that no one is really paying attention because whenever you have a question whether it be from the business office the nurse the tax they either answer right away or get back to you within minutes it's it's unbelievable the efficiency so that I think that will that efficiency also gives the parents a great sense of security so just just know that 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 Riverside is incredibly responsive Great, thank you, Rhonda. What what things are the boys allowed to bring in terms of um, uh, you know protein shakes or supplements, those kind of things? Can can they bring those items? And if so, do they keep them in their rooms or do they go uh, down to you? 
They can have protein shakes. They cannot have anything that is that is written on the side of the bottle or the canister that says not recommended for under the age of 18. Uh, there should not be any uh, creatine, creatine substances listed in the ingredients. Uh, preferably not high in caffeine, just simply because of the uh, amount of activity that the cadets do. Um, the caffeine is just not healthy for them. It dehydrates them too quickly. Um, it's not restricted, obviously, but it is not recommended. And they can keep those in their barracks, yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, what happens on the weekend during the rock cycle, Adam? Well, there's a lot of training going on. Uh, there's a lot to know about uh, being a cadet. Uh, we give them classes on uh, how to make a bed, uh, how to run a, what we call a PI in the morning. Everybody contributes uh, to the community as far as organization cleaning. Everybody has to know their part. Uh, they've got a drill and ceremony is going to be uh, a large part of what they're doing on the weekends. They already have a march. Uh, we were on campus as a group in a unit. Uh, we do the uh, manual of arms. Uh, there's, there is some downtime, uh, but the uh, bulk of that time is going to be dedicated to training. But the training is scheduled uh, for every weekend uh, up until the point of graduation. Can he play sports during the rock cycle? Absolutely. Uh, we encourage everybody to play sports. Uh, if they're not in an uh, active sports program, an in-season program, and they'll be at GSA, which is General Sports and Athletics. It starts off as a military style PT and then breaks out into uh, uh, intramural type stuff. Great. Uh, Dean Green, is there anything uh, helpful that you've seen for boys that are negotiating the rock cycle as they get used to sort of the academic structure and expectations relative to uh, Riverside? That's a great question. Uh, actually, I find that uh, during the rock cycle, uh, our new cadets, our new rocks, uh, do really well. Um, it's that transition from the rock cycle to being a full-time cadet, uh, where we typically see, you know, that relief of, whoa, I'm, I'm no longer under 24-hour, you know, absolute strict directed movement. Uh, and they don't get that freedom, but, but they get a little bit more freedom. Uh, so in some ways, that's a great thing. Uh, but but uh, that's when they we kind of have to remind them uh, of, of of all the things that we have in place to support them academically. Um, but uh, in terms of coming in, certainly uh, if if a student hasn't been in, in an all boys school, the learning environment's a little different. Uh, the classes are a little bit smaller. So if they're coming to us from a, a big school uh, where there's you know 25, 26, 27 students in a room and they go to a room with 10, uh, they're going to get called on a lot more, they're going to be involved a lot more, uh, more is going to be asked of them. So that's a bit of an adjustment, but in fact I find that, that most boys really enjoy that. Um, and they might not admit it on the front end, but, but being in that small group environment just it pulls them right in. And uh, So like I said, the only challenge that, that I've found is you know, the rock cycle, they come in, they want to impress. Um, it, it, uh, the school as a whole, when, when, when boys come here, no matter you know how they come to us, when they get here, they, they want to do well. They want to prove that they can do it. And that's the same in the barracks as it is in the classroom. Uh, and so, uh, just the, like I said, the only adjustments are just figuring out how, how single, single gender education classroom works, uh, and then also realizing in, in a small, small class environment that more is expected of you. Great. Thanks. It's very helpful. I guess probably the most important question goes to uh, Alice, Miss Hendrickson. What was it like? What was the first 30 days like? How'd you handle it? Sort of how'd you get through it? Uh, oh. I remember Andrew's rock cycle very <laughs> fondly. So how, how was it for you? Well, I think you picked a good parent because I, I don't know if it could get much worse from my perspective but it, it was it was tough but I also rock cycle um, again the best advice I can give is email be supportive encourage don't feed into negativity but you know present hope and positivity all the time and more than anything trust Riverside I you know I got antsy um, but I, I never said this isn't working or why don't you do this or that it's 
you know, they just knew that I was concerned and connected, and Riverside found a way to make him successful. Um, so it, it's just critically important to trust the system and trust everybody who's intimately connected to your son because they are with your son 24-7 and they do know what he needs and they're going to find um, whatever it is to, to kind of pave the path. So that's it. Just just be wonderfully positive and supportive through email and reach out to the tax if, if you have any questions and um, you know and or the admission team. Thanks. I will say that, that another thing that would, would uh, be helpful for you guys to know. So, um, yeah, yeah, but not impossible. Wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be Riverside if we didn't step on top of each other here in this, this uh, <laughs> online sphere. Um, Alice, I don't know if you've frozen up, but I'm going to move on. Okay. Because I, I lost you there for a second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did you hear uh, me again? Yeah, now you're back. Great. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Hey, I just wanted to point the families that are on the, the Hangout. That was that was very helpful. We heard virtually all of it. Okay. Thank you so okay. much for those, those <laughs> comments. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of resources that you're going to want to, to access. These will be provided to you in hard copy upon registration, but there's some things that are worthwhile looking looking at prior to coming on the 13th of January. At this point, Kayla, are you ready to share the screen so I can talk through what to expect? Uh, let me see. Do we have the screen up? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk through a couple parent resources. If you go, when you log in, you will see under parents, um, thing that says rock parent resources. You click on that, there are a lot of helpful documents inside of there. Um, you'll see that you have the new parent survival guide. This mm -hmm. was written by a parent for parents. And so it's really from their perspective. It's some things that you can expect. Uh, it hasn't required a whole lot of update, frankly, since the time it was written a few years ago because it still, it still holds true. You can expect a lot of the same uh, the same type of things, and it'll help you sort of just understand this new world, uh, which which it is to almost everybody that involves. You also have some other uh, parent resources there. If you click on that, Kayla, other RMA parent resources. Let's see what that's uh, what's that got for them. You'll see the calendar, the blue book, all these these different things. How to contact your your TAC officers. If you ever get stuck, uh, Manners for the Riverside Man, that's Emily Post for boys. Uh, everybody's got one of those. We'll even teach them which fork goes to the salad and which one goes to the meat uh, uh, and how to treat a lady, which is uh, something all boys need in this day and age. Go back to those resources, please. And then some other things, school photography, some helpful hints. Um, things that you, you might want to access, and then some other helpful links there at the bottom. Uh, I'll tell you that, that the best way to, to learn, frankly, is to visit, to come on campus, to talk to the staff, to talk to the boys. We will open every door and we'll pull that, every curtain to the side, all right, so that you can, uh, you, know, you can ask and feel as comfortable as you can. Just as Alice said, to enroll a student at Riverside or really any boarding school and college is trust. It's about trust, and um, we certainly appreciate your trust in us. We take it very, very seriously, uh, and we want to be as responsive as we can to both the boys and to you as parents. Uh, so we certainly appreciate this time that you took with us today. Uh, we look forward to working with you and your family and welcoming yours to ours here real soon on the 13th. If you have questions, concerns, or you need anything at all, you know some of the names here, uh, now having met us in this forum, uh, feel free to give us a call or come for a visit. We're going to be open during, pretty much during the holidays. Feel free to give us a call. Uh, anything, any parting shots from the staff before we say good night? Um, I just want to say that if anybody wants to call me as a parent, uh, Major Corbin, you please feel free to share my phone number. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate that. Anybody yeah. else? I would just say, um, you know, you're going to find uh, some amazing cheerleaders in your son's teachers. Uh, these are teachers that have been here, they're experienced, and they know what the boys are going through when they go through their rock cycle. 
Um, in the same way that you can reach out to the tax and, and reach out uh, to any party, you can also reach out to your son's teachers, and they're going to give you, um, you know, some honest updates, not only in terms of how he's doing academically, but just kind of how he's doing generally. And uh, you know, just we, we welcome we welcome questions and feedback, and uh, um, we're just we're we're all we're all in it for the same reason. We want to see the boys do well. Thanks, Jamie. Well, Anybody else? Adam, I know you're itching, right? <laughs> I'd like to say that uh, I've got a dedicated team of techs uh, that are invested in this process. This is not something uh, that one chooses to do for a living. Uh, if it's not a calling, you know, you're just going to do it. Uh, we've got guys, my techs in the barracks, uh, uh, retired military guys, they, they've got a lot of options. Uh, you can't do this unless you get something personally back from it. Uh, and I've been at this academy for 20 years, and it's I can tell you it's not for the paycheck. Uh, it's that sense of satisfaction uh, that I get from uh, the end product that we produce. So, uh, I thank you for your trust in us. Thanks, Adam. Rhonda, Arlene, anything else before we close out? I'm good. All right, great. All right, we hope to see you soon. Look forward to seeing your boys. Uh, get them some good haircuts and get into the fold. <laughs> Thanks, and everyone have a wonderful evening and a great holiday season.